Praise the Lord. Welcome to Asiri TV and we are coming to you from the studio in Bahrain. It's my joy and privilege to be the host of this program, The Servant of God. And today we have a very special servant of God from the kingdom of Bahrain. And his name is uh, Reverend Siraj Jacob, the senior pastor of the Encounter Church in Bahrain. Pastor, welcome, Thank welcome you. to Thank the you. program. And it's uh, such a joy to know this servant of God for almost 20 plus years. And today I believe that your life is going to be enriched as we dive in to his life and life experiences, you know, what God has been doing in his life. So, Pastor, let, let me welcome you once again you. to the Thank program. And let's tell the beautiful viewers out there, you know, about your background uh, right. before you met Christ, right? All right? Before you got to Bahrain. Just give them a brief introduction of your, you know, past life. Sure. So, when I look back at my life, I was a person who wouldn't be seen dead in a church. That means I was far away from the church. Church was not an option for me. I was completely away from that. And uh, I was pretty much living in the world, doing things of the flesh or living in the world as a worldly person lives. I was brought up in a good family, so basic values were there, but that had nothing to do with uh, Christ. They tried their level best to bring me to Christ, but I was far away. And uh, uh, over a period of time, I started getting uh, addicted to various uh, things like cigarettes and alcohol. And cigarettes, I used to smoke something like 40 cigarettes a day. I used to smell like a smokehouse, I would say. And uh, over a period of time, I was able to give it up. It was an ongoing fight. I think I gave it, over, gave it up over a period of nine years from 40 to zero. It was nine years. But what happened is when one vice was handled, another vice came up in the form of alcohol. Right. So I started getting hooked on alcohol. Initially, it was a weekend drink. Then it became a week-long drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, around this point of time, I got touched by the Lord. I got touched by the Lord in the sense I had gone for a meeting and uh, I went because my wife called me. She said uh, there's a meeting and I love my wife and so I wanted her to be happy. So I just went along with her. When I went there, I saw all these people jumping and dancing and clapping and uh, shouting. So I thought, what a bunch of losers. What are they doing? This is not the way to praise the Lord. You should be very quiet and humble, not like this and all that. But somewhere in the meeting, I didn't feel it, but the Lord touched me. And uh, in the evening, we came back home. It was about uh, uh, 7 o'clock. Normally at 7, my friends will come and uh, honk. And then I get on their bikes and, uh, you know, we go uh, for playing billiards and all that and having a couple of beers and stuff. So that day, nobody came. The next day in the evening, and I didn't, I didn't think about going to the club. The next day in the evening, my friends came, they called me. So I went uh, with them to the club. So we sat at our favorite table. And when sitting there, uh, the drinks came because they know, know us by sight and they know what we drink. The drinks came, the, but the moment I saw the drinks, I started uh, having a, a aversion inside me against right. this thing that was sitting on the table. And I just got up. So my friends asked me, hey, where are you going? So I said, uh, uh, I'm just going home. And I just uh, started walking back home. And that trip, that walk was very, uh, how do I say? I, I don't remember the entire walk, but suddenly I reached home. And when I reached home, my wife asked me, what happened? Why did you come so, I mean, how come you're early? So I said nothing. And I went up to the room and I had a Bible sitting there from many years back, which I had never opened. And that day I opened up the Bible and the words which said, uh, baptism is the application of a good conscience to God. It just hit me. Uh, before that, many people were coming and sharing the gospel with me, but I used to reject everything, saying that I'm born in a good Christian family. I don't need all this nonsense. 
But that day, this verse struck me. I mean, this is the verse that I saw when I opened the Bible. It was given as a foreword four in the Bible. I don't know which version it was. But it struck me that on my own, I cannot become a good person. Right. I, whatever I do, I cannot become a good person. I need to apply to the Lord an application of a good conscience that I should become a better person. And uh, we prayed together and we slept that night. And the next week, uh, I went to church and I got baptized. So after the baptism, I thought, you know, heavens are going to open up. But contrary to that, what happened was we started facing a lot of difficulties in life. And we came to a point where uh, there was no money in the house and we contemplated uh, ending our lives. But then uh, one day I was praying and I asked the Lord, I was living in the world, I had no issues, now I've accepted you, why are all these things coming? Why am I failing in my business? Then he told me, uh, if it were not for me, you wouldn't be alive now. All the things you did with your life, it was accumulating to a point where you were going to be destroyed. But right. at that right point of time, <clears throat> I intervened and I pulled you off. Amen. So that made a lot of sense to me. So along with that, and I never had any idea of working for the Lord, uh, ministering, nothing. I just wanted to be a born again believer and uh, live a life of peace and joy and happiness and all that. Right. But one of the problems we had was my daughter when she was born, she was born with a very uh, strange kind of disease. Right. She would continuously cough and she'll have white foam coming from her mouth and then for a week she'll be okay. It kept on going like that. We took her to many doctors, many places. They, they said various, various, rem they told us various remedies, but none right. of these things worked. And she, uh, this went on up to the age of uh, nine years. She was, it was her ninth birthday. She coughed very badly and uh, I went to her doctor and mm -hmm. he said, uh, start on steroids, the, the meter dose right. inhalers. And I had a medical background, so uh, I told my wife, uh, Bindu, if we start giving this drug, Sarah will be okay, but she'll be addicted to this or uh, dependent on this for her life. So at that point of time, the Lord brought mm -hmm. into remembrance a pastor preaching and saying, the same Jesus Christ who lives in me lives inside you. Mm -hmm. And if you pray also, healings can happen, miracles right. can happen. And I didn't know, really didn't know how to pray. I didn't have all the, you know, the technical words to pray. So we stood there and I told my wife, let's pray for Sarah. So me and my wife, we prayed and she went to sleep after that. And we forgot about the whole thing. After two weeks, we realized that Sarah is not sick anymore. Praise God. And that was a, a real uh, time where our eyes were opened up. And we realized that if we pray and people can be healed, then we should tell people about this. That is where uh, the real desire for working for the Lord started. So like when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Amen. So this has been my driving force in working for Him. Thank you, Pastor. Viewers, as you are watching this program, I believe that, you know, I just want to highlight a few things that Pastor was saying. Number one, you know, uh, you need to be there as a witness for Jesus Christ. And sometimes you may wonder, you know, I don't have all the answers. How do I, uh, you know, share Jesus Christ with others? Just like you heard, like his wife invited him for a service. You can do that. You know, just invite a person so that they would have an encounter with Jesus. And also share the word, as you heard, the Bible that was lying there for many months or many years. You know, the word of God will never return void unto God. So if you share the word, you can be sure that, you know, one fine day, that word will bring fruit. Also, Pastor, we just want to go back to your childhood. Just to give us a, a brief introduction about your childhood your family, you know, how was it? So I was born the youngest in a family of four. 
my dad was uh, with a company called Harrison's uh, Crossfield. He was the manager in the printing department. And he was also a choir master at the CSI church. My m mom was a math teacher. And the, the funny thing is, any student who comes to uh, my mother for tuitions of a class, they'll go out as 100% uh, uh, you know, as victors. Right. The only place where she used to fail was with me. <laughs> She'll try to teach me math and both of us will end up crying. So this is a basic idea about what happened to me in my younger days. So I was very, I was the youngest one in the whole family. And my elder sister was, I mean, the, 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 the immediate sister was uh, 14 years older to me. So being the youngest in the family, I grew up like a spoiled brat. And uh, that's, uh, th that's what I would like to uh, share right. about my childhood. Then I moved into college and uh, I did my uh, degree in commerce. Uh, after commerce, I, honestly, I didn't have any ambitions or anything particular to focus on. So while it, by the time I was doing my degree, my mom died and everybody thought this guy is finished because uh, I was well known among the party goers and all these people. So they said, this guy is going to go for a toss. And then my dad died. So everybody said, this is his end. Right. He'll just end up as a drug addict or something. But then the grace of God was upon me. I got a job in a pharmaceutical company called Glaxo. So Glaxo was very adamant about having only people who have a science background. So I was the first guy to work for Glaxo with a commerce background. Commerce background. And at that time, I thought it was all my ability, my capacity and all that. But it was much later as I journeyed through life. When I look back, I realized it was purely God's grace upon my life that carried me through. Right. Pastor, if I'm to ask you, like, before you uh, came to faith in Christ, if you are to single out one incident, which is an unforgettable incident in your childhood or as a youth, what would that be? <laughs> to, be uh, to be honest, there were many incidents, particularly uh, involving motorbikes. Okay. where uh, I would have been uh, dead in uh, milliseconds or seconds, but uh, I came out without even a scratch on my body. So I thought it was all my driving skills. But when I look back again, I know it was God who was protecting me. Amen. I just want to encourage you, you know, with, with, with those wonderful testimonies, you know, it is assured to you and me that, you know, even before you are, saved and you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, God is watching over you. God has his hand of protection Amen. upon you. So pastor, you said that when you came to faith, you know, there was a lot of challenges that took place, right? Uh, just give us an introduction to the journey of faith and how you, you know, overcame those obstacles okay. as you you know, sometimes we think, many people think that, you know, when you accept Jesus Christ, your life is going to be a life, uh, you know, trouble-free, a bed of roses. But that is not the reality. So when you started to face challenges as a new believer, yes. what kept you on the track of faith? As a new believer, when I, after I became, I got baptized and I, when I, after accepting the Lord as my, uh, accepting Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, one of the first things that happened to me was our business, as I said earlier, the business completely collapsed. And when it collapsed, I'm not saying that it collapsed because I accepted the Lord as my, uh, uh, Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. What I was saying is, it collapsed. And it opened, opened up my eyes to okay. people whom I thought were very close to me and good friends. Because I had moved out from the world into a spiritual life, most people rejected me. They said, this has happened to you because you went in a different direction. But then I knew the Lord who touched my daughter and took out that cough in the blink of an eye, who took out alcohol out of my system in the blink of an eye, Right. is alive and real and that kept me going on the testimony the first testimony we had in our lives was something that kept me on 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 track 
I, I also believe, you know, when, when you go through struggles, difficulties, challenges in life, some, some may wonder, why isn't God preventing it? Hmm. You know, if God is a God of love, if God is the God of all power, why isn't He preventing it? But I believe sometimes when you go through those uh, experiences, you experience God in different levels. Absolutely. Right? And I believe that would be the testament. Like you, you experience Him as a healer when he, when he touched your daughter. Yes. You experience as the deliverer when He brought you out of, you know, alcohol yes. and those bad habits. So then you experience Him as a provider, provider. when He starts to bless you back uh, with the business. Okay, Pastor. Now, I would like to know because you are also not only uh, a pastor, but you're also a businessman. All right. So how do you see, uh, you know, uh, a call into the business field as a gift of God and also as a service unto God? How will you uh, strike a balance in that? When I look at it, uh, I always take St. Paul, Paul as a role model because he said, right. I work with my bare hands so that I will not be a burden for the church. Right. So there's something that uh, struck me a lot in, in my uh, move forward in life. And I wanted to do something so that I can be a, a, a benefit for the society also. So I was working and uh, at one point of time, um, the Lord uh, uh, spoke to me and he told me, I'm going to do a brand new thing in your life. So I didn't really know which direction to go because I, right. was, I was a jack of all trades. I did right. commerce, I, I was into pharmaceutical selling, then I got into oil, oil field supplies. And I, I was in all different trades all over the world. So mm -hmm. I was a t typical jack of all trades. So then there was a hobby that I loved a lot. That is uh, music, audio video and things like that. So then the Lord opened up this door for me where I was able to get into a niche market called Acoustics. Right. And the brand name, the name of the company he gave it to me, he gave it to me as it is called Martinville Acoustics. So this whole thing was opened up by him. It had nothing to do with me. So he got me into an area which I love to do. So now right. my business is not a work that I do. It is my hobby. Too. It's a passion. It's a passion. Right. So in that passion uh, and in that business, since it was started by the Lord, he started blessing us tremendously. He just opened up doors all over the place in different parts of the world. And as we started moving forward, this was helping us in our ministry without having to depend uh, on uh, anything. It was purely from him. Right, right. So Pastor, now <clears throat> you're coming to your faith, you experience in Jesus Christ. And then you are also having a successful business. Now you started out as a believer. Just tell us how the Lord led you into a pastoral ministry? How did uh, the Lord bring you into a Christian ministry? All right. So when I came to Bahrain, initially I was attending a church. And uh, in the church, I was just supporting uh, in uh, transporting uh, the, the, the youth to their homes right. and to the church and all that. And I never had any idea of starting a church or being a minister or being a pastor or any of these things. So at one point of time, one of the pastors uh, from India, when they came here, they said it's time to start a ministry here. So I thought they were talking about me handling, uh, you know, logistics, because that was what I was doing at that point of time, putting the chairs, cleaning up the place and stuff like that. So I said, yeah, let's do it. We prayed over it and we uh, started a church. They came down from India and the meetings happened and they put a pastor in charge in Bahrain. So. Everything was well. I was just supporting the whole thing and I was happy and I was happy I was working for the Lord. And I, I was more happier that there was somebody in charge to take care of all, these, all, of, all of these things. So what happened after three months is they said, now we are taking the pastor back and uh, you're going to be in charge. You have to handle the whole thing. I was shell shocked. The first meeting, uh, I still remember it was at the St. Christopher's uh, Cathedral. Cathedral. Right. And I was asked to share the word. My uh, message was seven minutes, but to me, it was like an eternity. 
<laughs> so that is uh, where I right. started off. And then over a period of time, the Lord showed me a vision uh, where Africans, uh, African brothers and sisters who are going to come into Bahrain in huge numbers. If they are not shepherded properly, they are going to go into uh, serious trouble. And at that time, there were no churches uh, with African brothers African. in it. And we started the first Ugandan uh, uh, ministry. And so people from Uganda were all the members in the church. And that's how it started. Right. I know, Pastor, that you have a great passion and a desire to win souls. Right. But especially, you have a deep desire to reach out to the African nations. Tell us about your passion that you have for Africa. On a... <laughs> On a particular evening, I was sitting in my room, in my study, and I had this uh, huge world map on it. So the Lord said, lay your hands upon the map and pray. So I don't know which place I was laying my hand on, so I just went and, you know, laid in the central part, and I laid my hands upon that map and I started praying. Uh, I don't know what exactly He asked me to pray, but I just started praying for that. And at the same time, the Lord gave a date to my wife. I don't remember the exact date, but she, he gave a particular date to her. So, uh, next what happened is, suddenly I get a call from Zambia saying, uh, Pastor Jacob, we want to invite you to Zambia for the Pentecostal Assemblies of God Church, uh, the youth, youth conference. So then I asked him, uh, how did you get my name? Because I was worried whether it's some kind of uh, you scam. Know, scam or right. something. So he said, uh, one of the Ugandans in your church had met up with one of my pastors in Zambia. Okay. And they were looking for a, a, a minister to minister in this, uh, in this particular conference. And he suggested your name. That's how I called you. So I went back home and I was talking to my wife and she said, this is the date that the Lord gave me. And then I went back and looked at the map. It was exactly the same place where I had laid my hands on. It was between Congo, Zambia and uh, Uganda. So that is where uh, the ministry in Africa opened up. And uh, particularly the Lord told me very clearly that you need to shepherd people so that they have a space to grow in Bahrain. What he said was many years back, people from Kerala came into Bahrain. They were also either laborers or workers, but over a period of time, the churches shepherded them to be people of repute in this nation. That's so right. I'm giving you this task to shepherd people. So that is how uh, the, the, the ministry for Africa, Africa began. Happened. Yeah, praise God, you know. I think we, we should be encouraged uh, as we uh, listen to this wonderful testimony, you know, how things can happen when you have a burden to pray for nations and probably uh, as you are listening to this uh, program the Lord may be burdening your heart to pray for nations to pray for different language groups and in the due time I believe that God will open doors just as he did for Pastor Jacob he will open doors for you to travel nations and reach out to people you know, uh, with the good gospel of Jesus Christ. Pastor, I'll be taking you through like, you know, the church aspect, the ministry aspect, and then also the business aspect, because all you are right. involved in all of these areas. As we are on the page of, you know, the ministry, now your church has different uh, nationalities. That's right. So how do you see uh, handling different cultures, different, uh, you know, nationalities, different languages, you know, what's the challenge, you know, like shepherding a, a group of people like this? Because, see, if it's one nationality, one kind of a culture, it's easy going to a great extent. But when you have a diverse culture, people coming from different nations, you know, Africans, Asians, Middle Eastern, all of this, what's the challenge? that you face in all of this? The biggest challenge initially was thinking that I should be uh, bringing a change into their culture. 
And I used to tell people that there's only one culture, that's a kingdom culture, of course, which is a fact. But I, I, I was under the impression that the Lord is wanting me to do all of these things together. But then later the Lord spoke to me and he told me he will raise the people and uh, the different cultures right. and different language groups will be, um, you know, will be shepherded by different people. So this is a, a joint, uh, you know, thing that we do, a joint effort that we do for the kingdom. Amen. You see, that's why I think the Bible says that we, we are a body, Amen. right? One body, but different organs, functions are different. Roles are different, but at the same time, there is unity among all the diversities. I think that's the greatest mystery that uh, you read in the Bible when the Bible says that the church is the body of Jesus Christ. Okay, Pastor, I just want to take you back, uh, especially since you are also giving leadership, right? I would like to ask you this question. What is your view on the biblical requirement for spiritual leadership, on spiritual leadership, because, you know, there are a lot of uh, leaders in, in, in the world today, but yes. we're talking especially, we're streamlining very specially on the area of spiritual leadership, yeah. you know, Christ-like leadership. How do you see that, you know, in your ministry? It brings out a, a very interesting uh, part in the Bible from Matthew 2020. It says, then the mother of Zebedee's son came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor of him. And Jesus asked, what is, what is it that you want? Right. He asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at the left in your kingdom. So normally what happens in the church leadership is, it's all about who is going to be on top, who is going to control. We forget the fact that the church is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It does not belong to anyone, in a, right. not to us. It belongs to Him. That's right. So here, Jesus said, towards the end, He says in 25, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, right? And their high officials exercise authorities over them. And in verse 26, He said, Not so with you. Instead, Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be the first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So, in spiritual leadership, let's say uh, service, whether it is in uh, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a politician, whether you are a doctor, any of these areas which talks about service. If the service factor is taken out, it becomes a very dangerous thing. Right. So as a, uh, uh, as a pastor or an evangelist or somebody who is uh, 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 in charge of a church, I wouldn't say in charge of a church, the church is in charge, uh, by, with, with the, Holy, the charge is with the Holy Spirit. So as leaders in the church, the most important thing is having a, a servant attitude. attitude, a servant leadership quality. That means you should be, irrespective of what people say, irrespective of how people may treat you, still you should be able to go back to them. Ego should not, should not even be anywhere near you. It should right. be far away from you. If you have ego, you'll find it very difficult to be uh, in a church and be with different people. But if your ego is taken away, when you died in Christ, all those things are gone. You know, the word says very clearly, if anybody, in Christ, if anybody is in Christ, Christ, he becomes a new creation. creation. All things are passed away. So if all things are passed away, then it becomes a very beautiful experience. You will see heaven in this world, in heaven on earth. But at the same time, if those things are not removed, you will find it one of the, uh, the most challenging or one of the most disturbing things you can do with your life. That's right. Pastor, let me uh, ask you a very, very personal question, right? Sure. Uh, like, you're a husband, you're a father, you're a grandfather, you are a senior pastor, you're a businessman. How do you manage all of these different types of roles? You know, how, how, do, you, how do you really manage all of this? So I would uh, say I follow Galatians uh, 5.22 the fruits of the Spirit. Right. So as long as the fruits of the Spirit are in, uh, is inside you, 
it is very easy to live in this world this, you know the fruit of the spirit which is love joy peace forbearance uh, kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control when we have these qual i'm not saying have i've got all the qualities right. i'm still working on it right right you know it's a learning experience throughout right. and the more uh, the the more in depth you get into the fruits of the spirit the 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 more easier it becomes to handle different roles in life that's right. what i've seen right the, uh, also how do you manage time with all this you know uh, keeping up with the family keeping up with the business uh, demands the ministry challenges and demands how do you manage your time with all of this uh, to be honest no idea but he provides <laughs> <laughs> okay going back again to uh, you know the business uh, aspect yes. right see when when we are in the business field uh, we have to deal with many types of people true right and how do you like because there will be a lot of business uh, people out there uh, watching us listening to our program what would be your advice from a from a christian perspective yeah. you know how will you bring the values of the bible how will you take uh, the standards of the word of god and not compromise it yes. especially in the marketplace in in the in the business world how will you apply this in a practical way uh, the golden rule i feel for doing a business in a from a christian point of view is uh, given out very clearly in matthew 7:12 which says so whatever you wish that others would do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets so while doing business you have employees you have people uh, who interact with you so it is very easy to get into that bossy attitude right. and say that okay you guys are my employees you you might as well do it or get out it can it's very easy to do that but then when i look at my life the grace that he poured out upon my life that right. while i was still a sinner right. he died for me and he accepted me so that same grace i give into the business so now if you look at my employees most of them know that you know i rarely get angry with them whenever uh, uh issues happen uh, we speak it out and we clear it out so now it has come to an area where all of them they want to achieve uh without me having to tell them achieve what exactly are the company's goals and right. things like that and they want to achieve it and also we do not cut corners in our business right we make sure that if you are given a contract if you are asked to do a job we do it we try to go the extra mile and do it beyond their expectations so the secret of my business is the business that the lord gave to me is references we get from people whom we work for all yes. these people they give back references saying that hey these guys are good go to them you know sometimes we cut a loss sometimes in business because uh, uh, we have to go an extra mile to make them happy but we do it and the lord is in control and he keeps you know moving us forward right so have there been any uh, special uh, incidents that uh, has been challenging to compromise with the standards of the word of god in the area of business uh, initially yes initially uh, when i was working not in business mm -hmm. i was uh, you know i was working and i was a partner in an organization but I, i i wouldn't want to name what exactly it was right it was a huge uh, source of income for me if i get into it but one day in that job i realized that this is not exactly what is meant for me because it means compromising on the word and i went back to my partner and boss and i told him i don't want to do this so you know in the blink i mean when when i look at it it was a huge source of income that just i i just threw away but when i threw it away what happened is the lord opened up bigger doors for me so it's very important that you stay uh, in faith and within the biblical principles to succeed in life yeah i feel that you know sometimes there is going to be the test that god mm -hmm. allows us to face that we may you know prove that we are truly followers of christ mm -hmm. right also pastor if i would just say like you know this statement like uh, you know 
excellence with integrity mm. excellence with integrity is one of the you know core values of christianity right so how can you model this theme in the business world when you ask about that it's actually quite a, a tough question because many people would want you to uh, break away from that integrity and do things uh, that the world does and they'll tell you that this is required to make you successful so I remember some time back there was a person who came and asked me brother how is business right. so I said it's doing well then he said no that you're speaking in the spiritual uh, <laughs> terms okay but in the real thing how are you doing I said in the real thing we are doing well so he, he found it very difficult because at that time there was a, a lot of uh, negative impact upon the business uh, in, the, in this part of the world. But in those times, the word says very clearly, in times of famine, I will give you plenty. Amen. So it's all about depending and trusting in the Lord and moving forward and working with integrity that will help you to succeed in business as a believer. And if I may say so, uh, in Philippians 4 8 the word says finally brothers and sisters whatever is true right. whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about these things so when you think about these things you know this is what you become when you think about things that are away from the Lord that is what you will become you will start reflecting that when you think about these things this is what you will become and you can be rest assured that the Lord will be with you right coming back to the spiritual aspect right the Bible says that Jesus said that in this world you will have troubles and there are viewers over there who sometimes believe why do I have to undergo all of this suffering? Mm. Where is God in all of this? Sometimes there, there may be uh, true believers who have truly confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, sincere, uh, you know, believers, sometimes struck with a terminal disease. Mm. And there may be other people also watching us today, listening us to to us today many prayers have gone un unanswered mm. pastor from a pastoral perspective what would you say to them to encourage them to continue in their faith uh, John 10, 10 it says Jesus Christ comes to give you life and life and fullness and the devil comes to steal and destroy and the book of James it says you will have troubles in this world but take out, I have overcome them. So what I would like to say here is, many years back, when there was an internal strife in Bahrain, we had almost, uh, uh, or a period of four months, business was almost gone, um, before the strife happened, because of an issue we had on the base, the US Navy. Uh, too many contractors came in, and we were not doing anything for four months. So all my... Uh, reserves were finished and the fifth month we were praying and we couldn't get an answer so the next thing like everybody else does in the Middle East when things go wrong is thinking about sending your wife and children back which is not from the Lord believe me so we uh, started praying and then this internal strife happened so the news came that uh, everything is going to be closed everything is going to be bad and all that and I was wondering, Lord, I'm working for you. Why is this happening? Right. Why should anything like this happen in my life? We looked at uh, sending the children back home. But at that point of time, the Lord, the Lord opened up a very powerful door for me. That is, there was a dredge in deep sea which needed some kind of interior works on it. So the only challenge was it has to be done from 7 p.m. in the evening to uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. The bigger organizations were not ready to take such a job and we got the contract and this contract got over in two years that is daytime we were all sleeping night we were working okay. and in these two months 
whatever I lost in the previous four months and enough to carry me forward for another six months, the Lord released there. Amen. So what I'm saying is, sometimes some doors are closed Gosh. so that He can open up bigger doors. And when it comes to diseases, my daughter was sick, nine, nine years. But that sickness, it turned out to be for His glory. It opened up my eyes that, you know, Jesus can work through me and can heal my doctor and I can share this with many people. Amen. So what I would like to say is sickness does not come from God. It is very easy to blame God and say that, okay, the sickness is from God. I accept it. You don't have to accept it. The word says he will give you a long and fruitful life. Amen. So you need to believe that and you need to stay strong. Whatever disease right. you're facing, whatever financial crisis you're facing, you need to reject it. Do not accept it. But at the same time, do not let go of the Lord because some of, some, most of the times these doors or these challenges come so that you can be a stronger person, so that the Lord can open up a better door for you. This is from my personal point of view what I have experienced in life. Pastor, also like um, talking from a pastoral perspective, what would be... Uh, your goals, what would you like to achieve as a servant of God? Amen. I would like to raise up as many people as possible. You know, those uh, uh, interesting uh, topics somebody spoke once. He said, God does not have grandchildren. Right. God has only children. Right? Being born in a Christian family does not necessarily make you a child of God. So you become born again and you become a child of God. But as pastors or evangelists, you need to be grandfathers. That means you need to make sure people who come to you are empowered in ministry so that they can also give birth to spiritual children. Amen. So that is my focus in life to empower and build up as many people as possible to take the work of the Lord forward. Right. For those who are watching as pastor, uh, you as a pastor and also a business person uh, what would be the practical advice you would give to someone who is in ministry and also in business what would be the secrets you would like to share for success without compromising one of the most important things would be not to combine business and ministry together so what I'm talking about is don't bring your business into the ministry. The business is something that the Lord has given you to support the ministry. But then from a personal point of view, I will never want to mix do these two things. That is, you know, bring part of that business into the ministry under whatever protect, protects it might be. So I keep it separate. So, yeah, that's it. So what you say is, you know, ministry has to be kept separate and uh, business has to be kept separate yes i don't right. want to bring the business into the ministry the the business can be used to support the ministry but this business should not under any circumstance have to do anything with, uh, with the church with the church right that's what i have felt right that's great also pastor like you know um, you are in bahrain uh, serving in a multicultural society uh, from a pastoral perspective what would be your vision uh, in a in a in a environment such as this as i said, uh, said earlier the vision would be to raise up as many ministers as possible with the same perspective that they should also raise up you know uh, i remember a long time back uh, i met a couple of people on the streets that's how the Malayalam ministry started so I met them on the street and they said hey pastor how are you I said I'm good so what are you guys doing so he said oh our pastor died we don't have a pastor we don't have a church to go to that is actually an extremely dangerous situation where if the pastor is moved from the church the people or the the the, the, the flock becomes unshepherded right. so it is very imperative and important that you are ready to you know uh, empower people you should not worry if a, you know if a boy who is below i mean who is coming into church and you are training suddenly starts uh, uh, you know uh, exhibiting uh, supernatural 
uh, uh, signs, wonders and miracles in his ministry. You should be happy that you, you know you raised up somebody to be somebody much bigger. So with that perspective, uh, ministry becomes a joy to be in, particularly with different people coming in, different nationalities. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't segregate between them. You see all of them as children of God and whomsoever the Lord is going to use, He will empower. Amen. Pastor, one more thing before we end the program. You know, uh, when, when COVID happened hmm. and churches were closing down, because of health reasons, people could not gather. Yeah. Uh, people had to leave the island. When all of this turmoil was taking place, uh, God gave you a, a direction to construct a okay. church building. Yeah. Tell us about that. <laughs> so what happened is the, 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 the time before COVID struck, for, the, for Christmas, the Lord gave me a word, in times of famine, I'll give you plenty. We will ha you will have plenty. So it's not a typical Christmas uh, message, message that you preach. So I, you know, fought with the Lord and said, no, 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 I don't <laughs> want to preach this. But he said, you right. will preach this. And finally, I gave up and I got up on stage and I preached the word saying that in times of famine, God will give you plenty. It, has, it had nothing to do with the nativity scene, none of those things. It was purely <laughs> something else. And, you know, it went, yeah, the Christmas program was good, it went well. And then, to my horror, for the New Year service, I was sitting down to pray and the Lord said, this is what you're going to preach. In times of famine, you will have plenty. That, that's the year-end service, the crossover <laughs> yeah, service. The okay. crossover service. Right. I said, Lord, I, I agreed with you for Christmas, but for not New Year. Because right. I want to preach this message. Right. They'll think right. I'm not praying, I'm repeating a message. <laughs> But he was very adamant about this is what you will preach. Right. And again, for the crossover service, I, I preached the word, in times of famine, you will have plenty. So a few people asked me, Pastor, what is this famine you're talking about? There is no famine in Bahrain. This is, a, this is a blessed land. I said, I have no idea. This is what the Lord told me, and I don't want to go against what he says. I don't want to preach my own message. I would rather right. listen to him, even though I you know, wrestled with him. And then Corona struck. Corona struck, churches were closed down, you know, many churches were closed for good because people are not able to manage it. Right. And at that point of time, we were we, we having a space for the church. And the Lord told me, you leave your home where you're living now and come and stay in this place. So it was like a broken down place. I mean, not in good shape. We were quite uh, apprehensive about it, about going and staying there. But since the Lord spoke about it, we went and stayed there. So the plan that the Lord had is to preserve that space. Because when the church is closed, there is no way it can be uh, maintained. So the Lord wanted us to preserve that place by staying there. And in that time, the Lord provided a supernatural provision which helped us to uh, make a space for the, uh, for the service. So. You know, in times of famine, he will give you plenty. That's what I would like to say. So in, in that COVID period, all the people who received the word, none of them lost their jobs. If you look at the brothers in the church, who are, who are is doing business, they started doing amazingly well. And even in my business, I did uh, three or four times the normal business that I do in a normal year. Praise God. So when you listen to the Lord and as long as you don't wrestle with him much, you let him have his way, he will take care of you. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I believe that, you know, as you have been watching this program, it has blessed you. It has uh, encouraged you to take steps of faith. You know, as we just heard, even in the time of famine, God will make sure that you will have plenty. All that you have to do is listen to what God is saying. Obey his word and act upon it. And I believe that, you know, uh, as we have heard today, what God has been doing in this servant of God's life, it would have been surely uh, encouragement to you. Pastor, what would be your last words to the viewers that you would like to say before we end this program? I just would like to say that he loves you so much. You know, the word says, 
for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that anybody who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life so in a nutshell God is so deeply in love with you whatever you see the negative things that you're seeing in your life right now it is not from God maybe at times you may doubt God but let me tell you he is in control and he wants you to succeed in this world and he wants to make sure that you go into eternity God bless you amen so we would like to end this program by assuring you that God loves you irrespective of where you are what your past has been what your present may be God's love is much more greater and more powerful than any sin or any mistake that you can ever commit his love is greater and your mess that you are in will be turned around by his power to be his message to nations so we want to encourage you and you know i i pray that you have been blessed listening uh, to the testimonies and uh, you know the insights that has been shared today within this program so thank you for being with us and we will desire to come to you soon with another episode of another wonderful testimony of a servant of God how God deals with people how God brings out people how God heals people delivers people saves people and use them for his glory to expand his kingdom God bless you we'll see you soon <music>